Hey guys, wanted to do a little bit of a shop update on what I've been piddling with. I've just sold my T5. I'm happy to report that is uh, going to be a future addition to a 55 Chevy two-door post behind a 283 old school Chevrolet and that uh, the new owner is going to absolutely love having that 0.63 overdrive fifth gear i've uh, been playing with the 5.3 build that eventually will make its way into the blazer um, if i get it done and have all the finances to just do the swap uh, i'll probably go ahead and do the swap but at this point, the 4.8 seems to be a good, solid, strong running engine. So I'm in no hurry, you know, to finish the 5.3. But I just was going to show you guys this manifold I picked up that I'm going to try to run as my passenger side turbo manifold. This is a factory exhaust manifold from a 2006 Monte Carlo Super Sport which apparently has that sideways 5.3, which I I think they call it the LS4 or something. I don't know, it has a weird indicator of what uh, engine it is. And it does have some uh, application specific like timing cover, cam sensor, a lot of different things about it are, are weird. Like the starter mounts to the transmission instead of the engine. And I don't know, there's all kinds of weird stuff. But I picked up this manifold because I was like, man, this thing almost looks like a turbo manifold if you just turn it around backwards. Or maybe that's how it went on that stupid Monte Carlo Super Sport. Who knows? But I'm going to do some measuring and see, is that going to be applicable? Do I have to cut it up and maybe make it a log manifold? Who knows? But for free... You can't really complain too much. So, um, of course, the cam is still in here, set up with that used 2004 LS2 timing chain. Um, I did pick up a brand new LS2 chain, but I haven't put it on to see if it affects my uh, intake center line readings or anything like that. I just, you know was playing with this thing, kind of seeing what was going on with that manifold and if I thought it would clear, but who knows. But I was gonna show you guys over here on the workbench, I was doing some work on the uh, flex plate to torque, confer torque converter bolt pattern. Okay, this is my B&M Torque Master 2400 stall. Um, it's supposed to be a 23 to 2500 stall I don't remember the diameter on it, but I want to say it's like a 12 inch torque converter. Um, what I did was I used uh, the adapter ring that goes in the back side of the crankshaft between the LS crankshaft and the old school automatic transmission torque converter. I was just kind of using it to center the flex plate as best as I could so that I could mark the holes and just like the internet shows, you have to elongate those holes towards the middle on all three, about half, not quite half of the size of the original hole. So I'll just probably use a double cut burr so I can work this steel without doing a whole lot of damage to my burrs. I'll just elongate that hole to where I can get bolts in there. And then the flex plate will be ready to go in on the four point, you know, when I put the turbo 400 behind the 4.8. And then I'll have this, you know, roughly 2400 stall. Who knows what it's going to actually stall in until I get it in the vehicle because there's a lot of different parameters that can affect how much you're actually stalling. But I just want to kind of share some of this uh, measuring and small you know grunt work that has to be done while we're getting ready to do that switch over to the turbo 400 in the blazer um, tempted i still don't know 
This is a 110,000 mile flex plate. This was the original flex plate on my that I had on my 2002 4.8 when I first bought it. 110,000 original miles. Um, just in case you guys aren't aware, flex plates are called a flex plate because they actually can flex and absorb some of the um, let's call it converter movement. Like your converter can put a lot of pressure on the back side of your crankshaft which can cause wear to your thrust bearing. So basically your flex plate is kind of a sacrificial piece that is, allows it to absorb a little bit of that um, converter push, let's call it, towards the back of the engine. Well over time, when you hear people saying, oh I cracked my flex plate, that's just a, a wear, that's just a, a byproduct of flex plate doing its job over a set period of time or thousands of miles where it's just fatigued itself and broke just like if you bend a piece of metal back and forth too many times it finally cracks and breaks so you know basically that's what we're looking at and I'm thinking should I go ahead and bite the bullet and just go ahead and buy a brand new flex plate at my current power level do I actually need an SFI rated one okay got a little bit of work done uh, it wasn't near as much trouble as I thought it was once I realized how much pressure and RPM to use on my cutting bit or burr. Damn thing kept jumping around real bad because this flex plate material is pretty doggone hard. But basically what I did was centered this thing using this little adapter to kind of get in, you know, just to eyeball how much I needed to take off. Because I think there's a little bit of wiggle room when you go to actually hook your transmission and your torque converter and everything up. You might be off just a hair. Basically what you're doing is changing it from this metric, well I think it's like 11, close to an 11 inch down to like 10 and 3 quarters. See if you guys can see in there. Basically what I did was just making a reveal around the whole bolt hole on all three of those. And then of course dug through my hoard of junk and found three uh, standard, because B&M uses a standard thread torque converter bolt. Um, I'm using these style star lock washers. I don't know if I'll stick with that idea they were just in with these torque converter bolts, so I just kind of threw them on there. But basically, I've got all three, you know, enlarged or elongated to accept that 10 and 3 quarter bolt pattern. Um, it's pretty interesting that that's all you really have to do to run, you know, because this thing is, has an equal reveal. I got plenty of engagement for the head of the bolt to hold the flex plate. So it's going to be good to go. I've seen a lot of these, a lot of people do these on YouTube or online. Talk about, you know, just slightly elongating those holes. And it actually as, is as advertised as they say. Because I got all three of them. And the reason why I did that equal reveal kind of around where the bolt goes in is just so if there's any fudging, you know what I mean, if there's any issue with it going left or right around the center centric, what they call that, hub centric installation, but if there's any variance, I'll still have oh, a little under half, uh, probably an eighth of an inch. Uh, wiggle room on all those bolts so that you're not laying underneath the vehicle as a, as an example trying to put in your torque converter bolts and, you, and they won't line up or you get two in and the third one won't go in so I gave myself a little bit of variance so I know I can get these bolts in regardless of the situation and this thing's lined up you know like when I put it on because this thing fits pretty tight but when you put it on, kind of seat it, it's got a nice, you know, equal amount all the way around. So it sh hopefully that technique works out for me. So 
Um, just wanted to kind of throw one of these uh, grunt work videos up on just what some of the small modifications you do that maybe you don't video or and you don't remember to mention when you're doing these uh, swaps and add-ons for these LS's and different engine swaps so anyway appreciate you guys watching hopefully this wasn't too boring I wanted to make sure and get something done today while I had the garage door open and I had enough light to video um, been struggling with the super cold weather I can't open my garage door and uh, at my old shop where I had all those LED lights and all those pot lights and you know you could basically do brain surgery in my old shop and this thing has just about enough light to keep you from falling down so anyway keep watching like subscribe hit the little bell um, if you could give me a thumbs up every once in a while apparently YouTube likes that so that'd be cool thanks again for watching